So that finishes Arsenal 1, Monaco 3. Craig, how did this happen? Uh, well, for, well, we've managed to find some love for Arsenal in the last few weeks and uh, domestically because they've played better. There is none tonight. That was a shambles from the get-go. His team selection as well, no Walcott and uh, Welbeck wide. That was an interesting one. Giroud might as well get in a taxi and go. I mean, I've said for months... <laughs> He's been scoring a few goals I've, recently, I've, I've, I've said for He's scored five goals. I don't, I don't care. I've said for months, or years since he's been there, Arsenal, for me, will not compete at the very highest level unless they get a top striker. And he ain't a top striker. Whether he scores the odd goal in the Premier League or not, he isn't a top striker. And then I go to the other end of the field, Per Mertesacker. If he's in the Arsenal team in the next couple of months instead of Paul Easter, I'll be shocked, because he's gone. He's absolutely gone. He can't defend, he can't run. And his mistake for the second goal that was, was 10 years old on the school playground, getting attracted to the ball when he had a man in behind. It was quite honestly shocking. These are the marks out of 10 that our ESPN FC Arsenal blogger gave his side. Uh, Olivier Giroud getting a two. And then a sack, got a four. Wow. Uh, uh, One for each mistake. Uh, uh, dreadful uh, <laughs> marks all round. Alejandro, were you uh, picking Arsenal to win this tie? I uh, was. To roll over Monaco, I, I believe. was, as was the majority, because we expected a performance yep. from an Arsenal team that had been playing well in the Premier League, that had been, I, they had shown, it seemed, some maturity as a team, and it, they showed anything but that today. Can we show this tweet before we yeah, continue, you sure Ali? Can. Um, Not a problem. Uh, well, there's Stuart no Mateen, change. Uh, what, what, what does apology? it say? What, what I does can't it read it. Here. <laughs> the NFC panel owe you an apology, uh, Stuart, especially Moreno. Ali? Am Anybody I watches this show? To you? <laughs> no, there's, not, there's, not, there's very really an apology uh, on that. Well, I tell you what, I, 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 I you know who should no, apologise. This, this Arsenal players should apologise. This was off the back of yesterday listen, in which I you sat here yesterday City and make. I took my licks, I took my punches from you, and you deserved it. Well, Every bit of it. it. Well, I was the only one that gave Monaco the slightest bit of a chance. Now I tell you what, I did not think that they were going to go into the Emirates and win three one. I wouldn't mind one. I know I'm not going to get it from you lot. Let's get back to Arsenal. Wenger and all these excuses. Wenger puts these players in. Says his team could have won in the opening twenty minutes. In the opening five minutes, the opening four or five minutes, they came out the traps fast. Not after that. Not after that at all. Again, like Pellegrini yesterday, did not make a substitute at half time. Did not change things. That was strange. But I look at, if, if they don't, you know, coil this back in Monaco in, in two or three weeks' time, and it looks unlikely, I don't care if Arsenal finish third in the Barclays Premier League. What's the point finishing third or fourth and continually going out at, at the, the round of 16? Yeah. What's the point? It's, if that's the case, and even if it's not the case, it's time for Wenger, and I've said it for a while, to move on. Somebody like Diego Simeone or someone coming into Arsenal, giving it a shot in the arm, because... They're just cannon fodder at this stage of the Craig, game. But as bad as... Craig, you mentioned the fact that Oliver Giroud is not an elite striker. Yeah. And those chances, an average striker should be putting those yep. chances away. Yeah. But more troubling for me, for Arsenal, you look at the third goal by Monaco and the lack of discipline and attitude by Alex Oxlade-Chamberlain, that gives me the sense that this is a team that can compete at a high level because you cannot give the ball away. It's one thing to give the ball away and then not track back. You're going stride by stride by with Yannick Ferreira Carrasco and you're not able to track back and try to win the ball back. That somehow may keep you in this tie. You give up a third goal. That gives you an idea of what this Arsenal well, thing well, really let's is get to the cru moment. Let's get to the crux of the question that, that Craig has raised. Even if Arsenal finish third again this season, is it time for Ars uh, Arsene Wenger to walk away? Yes, I think so, because you have to have those aspirations, as, as Craig did mention. So what are you qualifying for every year? For the Champions League to compete amongst Euro Europe's elite? That opportunity, that privilege. But what and every the, time going out of the, the round praise of that everybody was giving Wenger when he went and beat Manchester City 2-0? Everyone was saying, well, oh, he's learned his that's lesson. Like, he's that's, that's now and again, Dan. It needs to be more consistent than that. That's just, that's just a good But listen, we have to talk about Monaco as well and the way that they came in into the Emirates. They sat deep. They played on the counter-attack. The midfield three of Condogbia, Moutinho 
and Fabinho were absolutely phenomenal. And they played the likes of Cazorla off the pits. Ozil was non-existent. And Coquelin is supposed to be that that anchor, the sitting one, because you have all these attacking players for Arsenal. Ozil was a joke. And it's a complete inability. The three of the goals... Let me tell you, what's 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 with that? Let me tell you uh, well, he's been out a long time injured, but he's far from set the head of the light at Arsenal on a consistent basis. Let me tell you about Monaco as well. I mean, not only defensively have they been great in this competition, defensively they've been pretty good uh, in the French domestic league as well. But they had an 18-year-old right-back making his first appearance in the Champions League and a 19-year-old left-back. It's embarrassing. I mean, the English club's performances so far in this competition hmm. have been pretty poor. But I mean, they're still in it. Chelsea got the best shot of going through, but their performances have been poor. And, that, and, and I think that's the key. I mean, I know you're the number one fan of Monaco all of a sudden, <laughs> but here, here, here's the thing. This is the number four team in league on right now. Yep. And goes into the Emirates and thrashes Arsenal. That sends a message. Gab Marcotti joins us uh, from London. Gab, how embarrassing is this for Arsenal? It's hugely embarrassing, and I'm going to pile on some more on the back of what Craig said. That 18-year-old kid, uh, his name is Almani Traore. Uh, this was his first ever start for the club, not just in the, in the Champions League. Um, you had Anthony Martial. He's a 19-year-old. He was actually uh, on the left wing. You, you had Yannick Ferrer Carrasco and Kurzawa, who would have started. They both came on. They were both injured, clearly not fit. Tula line in midfield uh, was suspended. There was no Carvalho. There was no Raji. It was a makeshift defense. And against this motley crew that Landry Jardim set them out there, I thought, absolutely perfectly. They absorbed the, the, the pressure. They exploited Arsenal's weak points. I think this is a case where this one's... We can criticize Giroud all day and all night, mm. but I think this one has to be primarily on Wenger. 94% is the SBI, is yeah, what it well, says. Um, you have a go at the SBI, I imagine, though, in this, on this instance. Well, they need to win 3-0, the don't SBI, they? So, yeah. Symptoms go the other way. I mean... It's it's shocking that that, that performance tonight, and, and you know I just I can't see them going through. Uh, well, Monaco haven't even conceded three goals the entire competition. I mean, put it one so. way. Put it one way. The other big clubs left in this competition, I, I think, will pull Monaco apart. I, well, I really do. Could this have a knock-on effect for the rest of Arsenal's season? I still think they're finishing the top four. Boring, boring. Let's finish in the top four. Arsenal fans, I think. Every fan, when a club's spending that much money and they're a big club like that, deserve more. Just to be going through the motions and seeing the same old, same old. Wenger talks about mentality uh, in his after-match press conferences. One of his quotes said, we don't seem to have the mental strength for this part of the competition when it gets to the, the knockout stages. Well, bring the players in that have got the mental strength <laughs> that can do the job. You've had long enough to do it. Gab, let's talk about the narrative that the Premier League is the best league in the world. Liverpool couldn't make it through the group stages. Arsenal lose, Manchester City lose, Chelsea could only draw against the PSG. Uh, what are we learning here? I think what you're learning is that when it comes to elite teams, the very highest mm. level, um, there is a gap with, with Barcelona and Bayern and teams like that, and we knew that. Um, but I think what's interesting is that other teams or other clubs have figured out on the night um, how to play them. And whether it's, uh, you know, Lander Jardim and Monaco, it's not rocket science, but they were extremely tactically uh, prepared. Uh, Paris Saint-Germain, obviously, uh, on the night, they came together. Um, you know, City against Barcelona, you know, whatever. You expect Barcelona to win. But um, I think the strength of the Premier League, if you want, is top to bottom. But I think when you, when you look at sort of number three, number four, number five, number six, versus their equivalents in Europe, which are generally number twos, threes, and fours, I, you know, there isn't this huge gap that, that some people believe. Yeah, I don't think this changes anything. Because, and I, I kind of get a bit sick of this, what's the best league, and you keep asking the question. <laughs> no, but, but clearly I've never put, clearly the Premier League's the league I'm most accustomed to, yeah. and played there yeah. uh, rather than playing in La Liga. I'm not saying La Liga hasn't got better teams, but my point is, is, is England have generally, for the last 10, 15 years, have always been behind elite teams but the, from Spain and Germany. The, the thing is, I think what, what Gab suggests as well, this isn't an elite conversation. This is a team which are third at the moment in England, who were completely outplayed no, but by Arsenal, a team that are fourth in completely France, outplayed. But also a team that spent Arsenal a lot of money. Arsenal were really, really bad. Really bad. I mean, if Arsenal had played anything like we know they can, they probably have won the game. But that's the whole point. When it gets to this stage, they lose their bottle. 
they've lost their ball. There's, There's, There's also a clear tendency, Craig, that and I think this is from an outsider's perspective, not having played in the Premier League. Yeah. I think there's a sense that perhaps some of the English teams, they underestimate, they overlook other teams around the world. Because it, it, it happened to Liverpool against Ludo Goretz. It happens to teams in England that they go elsewhere. And in this case, teams go into the Emirates and they get results and you think, how could this happen? So maybe because other teams, maybe they're but good. We, maybe other leagues well, we are have, competitive. We have to remember as well, though, that, that you know, Chelsea and Manchester United contested the Champions League final mm -hmm. uh, in recent years. Man United have won the Champions League in recent years. And so have Chelsea won the Champions League. So it, it, yeah. That was quite recent as well, wasn't it? And well, no, it wasn't. 2012. Well, you take a look at it, though, and that's, what, 2012? And you're talking about a final between Chelsea and Manchester United, 2008? I mean, if you're asking me who the best teams are, right, Who's the best teams? You're straight away, anybody with any common sense in this game is looking at the two Spanish giants yeah. and then looking at but, Bayern but I, I think we've right. shifted that conversation, haven't we? Mm. When you're talking about Monaco on a par with Arsenal, Monaco, when you're talking about Liverpool Arsenal. that can't get a full group with Basel, Monaco I think this is why we're having this discussion. Well, Liverpool have had a poor season, and that coincides with Luis Suarez leaving, who carried them last year. But they're still going to finish Mon fourth, according if, to some. If, if, well, potentially. <laughs> if Monaco... If Monaco were to play Arsenal more often than not, I think Arsenal would get the better of them. But they've had a stinker. They've had a stinker tonight. And let's not forget, everybody was saying, oh, this is a great draw for, for Arsenal, mm. Monaco. I didn't see too many big European teams looking to avoid Arsenal and being worried about Arsenal. They're not exactly playing one of, English, one of England's really strong teams at the moment. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.